Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, happy 2021. It's back to work now, I've had a few weeks off, enjoyed the time off and this is the first day back to work. It's the usual day for me really, I've kind of finished doing freelance work in the morning and now it's time to get cracking with all of my side projects and obviously making videos for this channel. So one of the kind of goals that I set myself was to make more vlogs because it's a nice way to document what I'm doing day to day and it's really just kind of like a personal diary. I don't expect people to find this type of content that amazing um, but it's helpful for me so I'm going to put it out there. got a few things to do today and I also just got some stuff in the post and the big thing that arrived today for me was a new softbox. So I got the nice photo softbox I did a review of it on the channel, um, I don't know, over a year ago now. I got the 120 centimeter version and it's really nice. I really like the softbox. I'd highly recommend it as a cheap softbox and it really does make life easier, it being quick setup. You can pack it away in a few minutes, less than that really. Now when I first bought the softbox, this room was primarily used for YouTube videos uh, and I could have my really big one, the 120 centimeter. This huge thing here. And it fit in my room okay. It was a little bit big for such a small room, but I can make do of it. As time has gone by, this room has kind of progressed into a design studio, a print studio. I really don't have that much space in here anymore. And the 120 centimeter version is getting a bit cumbersome. It really does take up a large portion of the room. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and bought the 90 centimeter version. It's much smaller. It really does make a big difference. Um, obviously it's not going to cast as nice of a light, but I don't think it's really going to be noticed in my YouTube videos. They're not kind of, you know, cinematic masterpieces. So it doesn't really bother me. And honestly, I just want something that's smaller and takes up less space. Now I want to show you the size difference. So I'm not even sure if I can fit this in but you can see the difference, kind of. You can see the difference in size. So I'm gonna be keeping this one and I'm probably gonna sell this one on eBay. It's a shame because it's very nice. It's a very nice light box. See, I can't even put it anywhere now that I've opened it up for the video. Here's another thing I received as well, this is the Type 1 magazine. This is a new biannual uh, publication dedicated to typography. Really nice typographic work, I love this kind of stuff. And some stuff to read about it as well. It, it goes over some topics, uh, talking about social responsibility, forms and space and explorations with someone. Issue 2 is actually already out. I backed this on Kickstarter when it, when it first got released. Uh, this is Issue 1. And yeah, highly recommend it. So it's a nice read. Something else that came in the post actually was a, a new a new dust mask. This is the 7502. I did have the, I guess it's disposable because you can't reuse the filters on it. That's what I previously had. Uh, I had it for literally like five years and I guess it was time to replace it. They say that it's time to replace it when it's difficult to breathe through it. And honestly, I never found it difficult to breathe through, but yeah, five years is probably time to replace it. So I got one of these ones. These are cool because you can uh, replace the filters on it and you can put whatever ones you want. Now, 3M do an absolute boatload of filters and it's very confusing to find out what one you need. But I've gone with the 6059 filter, which is organic vapors, which is good for paints. So 
if ever I'm working with paints or solvents or anything like that, that's what I've got on here. And then just on top of them is a P3 dust filter. So that will be good when I'm doing you know, CNC and I want to filter out all of the, the wood dust in the room. I've tried this on and it fits really nicely. It's very, very comfortable and it takes up less space on the face as well, which means I can get my glasses on a little bit easier. It's nice that you don't have to you know, throw away the whole entire mask uh, just to replace the filters like with other ones. I love the fact that you can just replace these. It's really, really important. I would highly recommend investing in a good dust mask because you see people just using kind of like, you know, the disposable ones that you see lots of people wearing at the moment during COVID when they're working with, with wood and dust. You know, if it doesn't create a good seal around the face, then it's probably going to be letting in dust and fumes. So it's really important to make sure that you've got a good seal. And actually, whenever I'm kind of working with dust or vapors, I always make sure I have a shave because uh, I read that even if you do have you know, stubble or a beard, then that obviously doesn't create a good seal. But if you're clean shaven and you put some, you know, if you just put some like, oil on your face, it creates a really nice seal around your face with, with the dust mask. So even little things like that, I know that's you know, probably been a little bit over paranoid, but if you're gonna be doing this for the rest of your life, you're gonna be working around dust and fumes, it can all add up. And in my opinion, it's not really worth the risk. So this was, I think this was £33 for just a silicone mask, just this 7502. The organic vapour filters and the dust filters were an extra 35 as well. So yeah, altogether, like £60, £70, pounds is, is, is quite expensive, but you can't really put a price on your health. So another thing I think I'm going to add to my list to do in 2021 is to finally fix this screen print setup. I built this thing out of wood as just a temporary setup to hold these A2 sized screens. And I've kind of just worked around it. And most of the screens I use are A2, so it's not really too much of a problem. But with things like this, where I just want to do a, a test print, I could easily use a smaller screen. I can't use it because obviously this is a fixed width. Now the reason why I've I've built this thing is because if you just if you just screw this into the clamps at the back here then it means that you're leaning over the table too much and I found that I was just getting pretty bad backache from constantly leaning over to reach when I'm pulling the screen so that's why I made this kind of just like a U-shape so I could push the screen back closer to the, to the edge so I don't have to bend over so much but I was just kind of looking at it and I was thinking well I can easily just you know, create some sort of kind of sliding thing here and still just add a clamp that just clamps onto the edge here. And I, then I don't need all of this kind of like, all of this wood here. It could just be like a sliding mechanism here that just clamps onto the edge. And then because the clamp is just here in the middle of the screen, I can then put on a smaller screen or, or any size screen. It doesn't really matter. So I think I'm, I'm going to get around to that in, in 2021. I think sooner than later, really. But anyway, um, yeah, tidied up the room a little bit. I put this screen back onto this table and I'm just going to use some of these. You can see that I've still got some thin lines from a previous design that we printed, uh, which is perfect really because the design of the vinyl is small circles. So I just want to see what a, a small thin line is going to look like on the craft brown paper. So we'll just uh, print some different fluorescent colors and see what they look like. Here's a little quick tip for all of you home screen printers. It's something that I'm, I'm just starting to realize myself. You do not need such big paint containers like this. Well, un unless you're doing like a thousand copies of something, you'll never need this amount of, of ink filled up to the top. I always make the same mistake whenever I'm starting a, pimp, a print project is that I'll make up like a big batch of, of the color that I want and then I'll end up using probably like a quarter of it and then I'm stuck with that color in that pot until I use it all up, which is you know, obviously not going to be for probably many, many years. No need to buy such big pots. You can get away with tiny little yogurt pots. That's fine. And yeah, don't make up a lot of ink because it goes a long way with screen printing, especially when you're, when you're using finer meshes and not much ink is actually going through the mesh onto the paper. 
Anyway, um, we've got some nice fluorescent green here, so we're just going to do a test print with this. So that didn't come out well, really. I think maybe if I used a coarser mesh, maybe you'd put down a little bit more ink. I don't think green is really going to work, regardless. You can see a little snippet of the design here, so the light grey circles in the background are the ones that are going to be the fluorescent colour. I think that none of these fluorescent colours are really going to come out very well on this kind of like craft brown paper. I think I might just have to go ahead and use white. But we'll do some more colours and see what we get. So we've done the main fluorescence, green, orange and I think this is pink. Pink obviously definitely stands out the most. I think green, maybe it would work if I laid down a little bit more. None of them really kind of have that pop. The orange does have a little bit of a nice fluorescent touch when it catches the light. I would say that the the red stands out the most, but it doesn't have that kind of like fluorescent pop. Still tempted to go with orange. It does stand out quite well in some places. You can't really see it in the camera that well. But it does have a nice kind of like fluorescent look to it. So I think the next thing to do is to actually make up the, the design, uh, burn it onto a screen and actually do some real test prints because I think it I think it could work. I think maybe one of these colours would work. And we're going to use a much coarser mesh. So these test prints we've just done, this is a 90T mesh frame. I've got a, a 65T mesh uh, which is obviously coarser so it should lay down a little bit more ink. So that's what we're going to be doing today then. We're going to coat the screen and we will expose the artwork. positives printed up two layers one's going to be black one's going to be for a fluorescent color i'm going to test print the fluorescence first because that's going to be the most difficult to print typically you do need to print fluorescence or metallics with a coarser mesh um, it's pretty easy to print black ink on pretty much any type of mesh the fluorescence is the one that i'm not too sure if i think these lines the stroke weight isn't thick enough really to print it with fluorescence so it might need some tweaking but we'll give it a go and we'll see what it looks like Cure. You've just seen how I go through the process of setting up the screen, washing it out. That little washout area in my bathroom uh, was what I was talking about in the vlog previously, kind of talking about improving the processes in my house. My girlfriend finally convinced me to do it because it means that I can wash out the screen standing up so I don't have to keep on bending over into the bath to uh, wash it out. It makes life much easier and the backlight really does help to see all of those fine details. I've done two quick test prints, one on white and one on the craft brown, which is what I did intend to use. So these bigger ones, uh, they've, they've kind of come out okay. The smaller ones are 
I mean, you can just about see them. I'm either going to have to tweak the design or I'm going to have to move away from this kind of like craft brown paper. The white stands out, obviously, much nicer. It's got the pop to it. If you lay down a decent amount of the of the fluorescent orange on this craft, it will stand out. But I don't really want to tweak the design too much. I don't think, regardless of what I do, something this kind of size is so small. It's not really going to work. I reached the end of what I can do with the uh, the screen printing. I'm going to have to order another screen in that mesh size because I've got two layers and I can only fit one layer on one screen. So save me having to clean the screen each time and, and print another design. I'm going to get another screen so I can just kind of swap the screens over. I think it will be easier. Uh, so I've got to wait for that to be delivered. I'm also going to be experimenting with some UV uh, varnish which is going to be really interesting. I've never done anything like this, but I don't know if you've seen kind of like spot varnish being used on printed like business cards and you sometimes see it on like high quality magazines and things like that. I've always wanted to, to kind of try it out. I'm going to buy some UV varnish that I can screen print and now I can use my UV exposure unit to cure it. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to order it all in one go so I save on the shipping. I don't know if you've realized, but this is kind of how it goes with what I do on the channel and my side projects. I've always got like three, four, maybe five projects on the go at the same time because I've discovered that I would you know, come across like a roadblock. Like for instance, I need another screen for, for that mesh size so I can continue doing screen printing. It's obviously going to take like a week to arrive, so I need to get started on something else. So the projects I've got on the go at the moment are the vinyl screen printing i've got the cassettes which i need to finish up i need to uh, crop them all up and i need to print the last two layers i've also got the uh, the proof impress which you saw in the previous vlog i need to finish up testing that and making the video for that and then i've also got a few other little videos that i'm going to be working on and yeah so pretty busy obviously on top of that i've got you know my other channel to run uh, and I've got you know, freelance stuff, so I'm always I'm always pretty busy. I, I kind of like it this way, to be honest with you. Uh, there's never really a day where I don't have anything to do, which is nice. Anyway, let's get started. Oh, and always, before I actually start doing that, I need to clear up because, as you can see, it's quite a lot of mess to clear up. This is something I, <laughs> I really, really want to be doing in 2021 is to just, after literally every single day, or at least at the end of every single week just have this room clean and tidy to start working in again um, you can see yeah I've already got stuff on the floor down there I've got stuff down there on the floor so yeah I'm probably gonna take a good half an hour just to clear up this room before I get the proof and press it out and then start making even more mess with with uh, inks and and trying to record it all as well this morning I've just been doing some just some kind of like product photos but yeah I'm really really happy with these how they come out a making of video will be up on the channel so you can check that out you can see how I screen printed it it's like eight layers and then I used my cameo 4 to cut out different crops of the artwork. I've already had a few people pre-order the album as well, so I'm really happy with that. It's Monday today, so on my other channel, I do a bi-weekly, which I think means every single two weeks, not twice a week. I do a live DJ set, I stream it on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. And I've just finished uploading it and doing the video for it and all of that stuff. Now, for most of the day, I've been, I've been in this room trying to get a thumbnail for the next video. Um, which is going to be the proof impress which you can see i've just got down here so i've actually got this table this screen printing table i'm actually sitting on it right now but it can handle my weight thankfully uh yeah i've got it in the middle of the room this is like the first time in ages that i've had the room set up kind of like how i originally had it which was for youtube where i've got enough space to put lights either side of my table Usually the screen printing table is just kind of like in the corner of my room where I do obviously screen printing. So I've managed to get the thumbnail. I managed to take some pictures of it. Now for the rest of the day, I've got to pack. and I've got to finish up the artwork for Natural Expressions number five. So 
So I think we'll end the vlog here. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll leave you with some sketching that I'm doing in Fusion 360. This is for the next project, which is to upgrade the screen printing table, which I talked about in the vlog. I'm going to be using aluminium extrusion and going to be seeing, seeing some extra parts for it as well. So stay tuned for that. It should be a pretty cool project. But that is it for now. I'll catch you later.